Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, allow me to share an amazing story told by Reverend Kenneth Klaus, Speaker Emeritus of the Lutheran Hour, and also some observations he made about our text. Once upon a time in a small South Dakota town, a local boy and girl began dating and fell in love. They got married. Rudy and, Ar Rudy and Arlene were their names. They had every intention of raising a family and living happily ever after in that town. It wasn't long that Arlene became pregnant. A Christian couple, they gave thanks to the Lord for the gift of life she was carrying. The baby was born, and they called her Caroline. Caroline was a beautiful baby, but she was also a baby with spina bifida. The hospital staff placed her in an oxygen tent. The oxygen was turned on, but too high. By the time the error was discovered, Caroline was blind, deaf, and profoundly challenged. Along with their apologies, the doctors also offered some suggestions. First, they said this young couple should go home and have another baby. Next, they shared this. Since statistics dictated Caroline would die before the age of six, it would be far better to put her into a state home. Rudy and Arlene decided on a different path. They, they didn't think they could take the gift God had given them and turn her over to someone else. They thought if Caroline really was going to die before the age of six, they would take care of her, love her, and tell her of Jesus. They wanted to be full-time faithful. Caroline was never able to feed herself or control many of her bodily functions. They could not leave Caroline alone for any length of time, so that ruled out vacations. When other children came into their marriage, the experts once again told the couple to send Caroline to a state-run shelter because the attention she demanded would hurt the other kids. For a second time, the couple ignored them. Eventually, the couple found out Caroline wasn't deaf. Yes, she could hear. And as the years passed, they discovered she could speak. Her vocabulary was confined to three words. Da, that was daddy. Ma was Caroline's second word. You can imagine what that means. And the third word Caroline could say, the word was Jesus. Jesus was always said with a smile. That's because during those feedings, both Rudy and Arlene sang to Caroline about Jesus and his love. Always about his love. Caroline's six-year lifespan went by quickly. She lived to celebrate that birthday. And another one, and another one, and many more. For 27 years, the couple took care of their girl. They faithfully took care of Caroline until Jesus called her home. They were full-time faithful unto death. I'm sure most of us would have worked tirelessly if we were sure our child might improve. But I'm also sure many would have listened to the, to the experts when they said, there's no hope by institutionalizing Caroline, or as some do today, forego treatments when she was newly born. Are we as faithful as Da and Ma? The point of telling this story isn't to say, be faithful like Rudy and Arlene. If you have a child like dear Caroline, do like they did. No, that's not the point. The point is that none of us are faithful. Truth be told, None of us sinners is as caring, concerned, considerate, compassionate, or as faithful as we like to think we are. And that statement about sinners is true for all humanity, except for one person, Jesus Christ, 
God's Son, the world's Savior. Our text for today reads, If we are faithless, he remains faithful. The scriptures tell us just how exceptional Jesus is. The opening chapters of Genesis set the stage. God had created everything and declared it very good. But in a self-centered act of defiance, Adam and Eve turned away from God's will and accepted Satan's deceitful suggestions. Their act of disobedience brought death and darkness into the world. Humanity was eternally lost. That's the way it would have remained if God hadn't intervened and promised to send his son to be the sinner's substitute and savior. And then when the fullness of time had come, God faithfully kept his promise to send his son, our savior. Thousands of years had passed since the promise, if that promise had been first given, God remained faithful. Rudy and Arlene spent 27 years caring for their daughter. Theirs was an enormous task, but it doesn't compare with what Jesus endured for 33 years as he faithfully did everything necessary to save us. He was full-time faithful. Jesus grew up in Nazareth, yet when he returned there and said he was living his life to win their forgiveness, those hometown acquaintances turned on him. Jesus was thought out of his mind by his own mother and brothers. Owning his own home and having a nice bank account or a typical family with children were out of the question for Jesus. His own government eventually declared him guilty of death, though he had done nothing to deserve it. Even his own church plotted his murder. In spite of all this, Jesus remained full-time faithful in doing all that was needed to forgive our sins and to save your soul. And when he was nailed to the cross, he forgave those who had put him there. No matter what others did, Jesus was always full-time faithful in fulfilling his Father's promise to save sinners. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. His faithfulness continues today. He is there in the adoption service that we call baptism. He is present to bless the, the vows of bride and groom. He sits beside every family that mourns, even the family of the pastor that we heard about yesterday, and provides faith as we hear his word and receive his body and blood. He is here, even now, for you. Faithfully, he hears your prayers, understands the great concerns of your heart, and wishes to calm your fears. He is here today, tomorrow, and the next day. He will be here loving you, forgiving you, and saving you. Full-time faithful, that's our Lord Jesus. Amen.